Have you ever wondered what might lurk in the deepest corners of the jungle? I had travelled to the western Peruvian Amazon on a mission to camera trap a small remote section of the Las Piedras River. Using several game cameras I targeted a small stream in two culprits. Four weeks later, I retrieved footage, and what I found was unbelievable. Now, camera placement is very critical, and picking the right places which look promising is part of the trick to your success. But common issues always arise. Full memory cards, dying batteries, dodgy camera angles are just some of the common problems when camera trapping. But church, this is what I got. The vulture, a scavenger by nature, with several species found throughout the Amazon. The trumpeters, the trumpet of the jungle, where the male calls out when any threat arises. But when danger is near, there is no species more acute to movement of predators than the agouti, a member of the rodentia family, high strung and rapid along the jungle floor. But speed and agility of the canopy is dominated by the primate and squirrel species. These little guys are always on edge, and for good reason. It is also the playground of the puma. A hunter by day and night, with the largest geographical range of any species in the Western Hemisphere. But for those species which are too nimble to be captured by the giant cat, the prowess of the ocelots is unparalleled. Hunting reptiles, birds and mammals on the jungle floor. A keen sense of smell, but a cat whose visual acuity is the key to his capture success. But it is here also that the jungle giants roam. Take your speed on leaves, and you shoots fruits and berries that litter the jungle floor. The jungle cow, as they are called, are becoming rare, as the habitat they rely on are sadly being encroached and cleared. A giant anteater, another threatened species on the verge of extinction, makes a cameo appearance before he disappears forever, back to the safe retreat of the jungle bear. This spectacular individual, the giant armadillo carefully checks his burrowing networks. Predominantly a nocturnal species, he spends most of his time foraging for ants and termites and dead logs on the jungle floor. But here, he is quick to leave. But when the sun goes down, not all goes quiet in the jungle. In fact, it comes alive. A mysterious world is captured on camera that would otherwise go unnoticed. It is now that the secretive animals emerge from their hideaways. A packer carefully creeps from the hidden burrow, where he ventures between dens in search of food. A common opossum hunts the banks of the dry riverbed in search of frogs and insects, whilst the bush dog smells the air. He is well aware I have been in the area and decides to retreat. Capybara roam the jungle floor in herds, sometimes greater than 50, with adults keeping a watchful eye for lurking new predators. A rare occurrence of a crab in a raccoon triggers the camera as he searches for freshly fallen fruit on the forest floor. A tamanjua passes through the river. They walk awkwardly on the ground as they are home in the trees. A margay makes an appearance as he passes along an armadillo hole, whilst the ocelots are back out hunting, back in stealth mode, with individuals often pairing as they hunt through the jungle. Now you're probably thinking, what the hell is a culpa? Judge! Alright! Now this here is called a mineral lick, but also called a culpa as well. Now essentially you're probably thinking, well, why is this place so important? And I'm about to tell you why. So get this, out here in the jungle, when animals are doing their browsing and foraging, there are many minerals and biometals that they actually don't get from consuming these foods. You know, whether it be fruits and seeds and roots and all that kind of stuff. So essentially they come here and this is where it's all exposed. Now it's funny because this place right here actually causes a bit of like a traffic highway with the animals. They'll literally come from kilometers. So the best way to kind of relate this is kind of like a pub, right? Get this. When you really need a beer, you're willing to go kilometres and kilometres to get one. That's exactly what the animals will do. So sometimes you can have some funny confrontations that happen right here. 
Now it's funny because you're probably wondering exactly what does a mineral lick taste like and I'll be honest, I don't know, but I'm about to tell you. Now, it tastes like dirt and I don't know why the animals love it so much. But apparently there's two different theories. The first one is this, that essentially they consume the minerals and the biometals because they act as neutralizers to get rid of the toxins from many of these leafy plants. And the second one is, well, in order for normal bodily functions to actually work, they need these nutrients within their bodies. And that's where the crave comes from. Now, setting up game cameras can be quite a challenge, particularly when being murdered by sand flies and mosquitoes. And not to mention when you're 15 metres in the air. Now, getting close to wild parrot species, and in particular the macaws, can be quite difficult. But what was interesting was to see completely different species interacting in the one small area, an occasion that can only happen on an exposed culprit cliff. The other copper too came with its surprises, with many different species of birds venturing to the exposed lick, with curious peccary taken to the area in the early morning, followed by the continual flow of both squirrel and primate species. You can notice that all the animals coming down to the clay lick are really putting themselves at danger by being vulnerable on the forest floor, and the animals' reactions highlight their security concerns, and this should is with good reason, because the king of the jungle, well, is always on the prowl.